Here they are, from New York City, Joe Namath. And from Oakland, California, Daryl LaMonica. Both these quarterbacks performed as champions in perhaps the finest and roughest game of the year. LaMonica's strategy was basic. Control the ball with deliberate short passes to his backs and ends. Billy Cannon demonstrated this theory perfectly early in the game. Joe Namath wanted to run his club in the early going, but found all avenues blocked. So he had to do what he does best, throw the long bomb. This one was incomplete, but it foretold of things to come. With seconds remaining in the first half, Namath threw to George Sauer, but pass interference was ruled, one of 19 penalties called today. After the penalty break, Namath fooled everyone by running himself for the touchdown. The halftime score was New York 12, Oakland 14.
The Raiders lost the ball, and now the Jets could take the lead. Rookie defensive back George Atkinson was having his troubles with the Jets' fine receivers. And Namath knew it. So he and Don Maynard picked on him until they scored the go-ahead touchdown in the fourth quarter. Oakland was now behind, and they just could not afford to be behind this late in the game or this late in the season. Fred Bolitnikoff led a march that culminated in a game-tying touchdown. <laughs> Through four quarters, the teams had battled. And now it was all even, 29 to 29. With less than four minutes remaining, it was a whole new ball game. But Namath and Maynard still worked on Atkinson. But more importantly, they were working on the clock. The Jets used up three minutes of time before Jim Turner set up for a field goal. The Jets led again 32 to 29 with one minute and five seconds remaining. What transpired from here was unfortunately not shown to the nation's television audience. After returning the kickoff 22 yards, Charlie Smith, number 23, sped 20 yards closer. A costly face mask penalty moved the ball to New York's 43-yard line. Oakland's next play was to be their biggest of the year. With 42 seconds left, Charlie Smith put Oakland ahead. And in a replay, we can see how he did it. Mike D'Amato was forced to cover Smith, and it was no match. Oakland's own Charlie Smith had given the Raiders a four-point lead. And now the Jets had a chance to come back. <laughs> Veteran Earl Christie lost the ball. And Preston Reidelhuber, number 37, recovered in the end zone for another Raider touchdown. Preston expressed the joy of all Oakland fans. In an astounding game, it was finally New York 32, Oakland 43. Monica to Charlie Smith. 
Smith is hitting and he scores! What a game! This crowd has gone absolutely berserk. Twice the Raiders have looked beaten, and rookie Charlie Smith, who's put on quite a show, has just grabbed this one. And now Oakland has the lead 35 to 32 with 42 seconds. But the Jets still have Namath coming back. That makes it 36 to 32. But now the Jets receive. The last two times the Jets have had the ball, they've marched right down for scores on Namus passing. Namus 17 for 35 today, 342 yards. LaMonica is uh, 20 for 32 and 251 yards. They squib this one to prevent a run back. Earl Christie fumbling it around. He fumbles the ball, and Oakland has it for a touchdown. Oakland has scored two touchdowns in nine seconds. Oakland now is kicking off after the penalty on the extra point. They're kicking off from the New York Jet 45. It just might be that I should will kick this ball over the goal line. He might boot it into the seat. And he does. It bounces out again. The Jets will never lose a more heartbreaking game than this. They had this one right in their hands with a minute five to go. They kept coming back and coming back. They scored with three seconds to go at the end of the half. They were behind, took the lead. Oakland went ahead. The Jets came back again to take the lead. Bay Perilli's the quarterback now. Boozer fumbles the ball. Ben Davidson has him, and Davidson bulldogs him down. Ben Davidson, number 83. This one's about all over, 15 seconds. We'll have a quick sign-off here. We hope you enjoyed the game. We'll be in San Diego next Sunday, 4 o'clock Eastern time, with a Jets against San Diego. This is Kurt Gowdy, and a great job today by Al D. Rogatis. And that's it, the final score, Oakland 43, New York 32. From the Oakland Coliseum, the House of Horrors, NBC aired one of the AFL's great rivalries. Daryl LaMonica's Raiders hosting Joe Namath's New York Jets. The game evolved into an epic seesaw battle best told by the legendary voice of John Facenda. The lead changed back and forth six times before the score was finally tied at 29 all. Then the Jets' Jim Turner kicked a 26-yard field goal, and the Jets had the lead with one minute, five seconds left. At 7 p.m., NBC had scheduled a kid's movie named Heidi. It was determined to air Heidi at 7 o'clock, and if football wasn't over, we would still go to Heidi at 7 o'clock. NBC executives wishing to stay with the game failed in their frantic efforts to contact the broadcast center. Thousands of concerned viewers had flooded the phone lines and blown out the switchboard. I thought, well, I have not been given any countermanding order, so I've got to do what we agreed to do. While Charlie Smith gained 20 yards, the network televising the game made the classic blunder. NBC turned off the uncompleted game in favor of a kiddie special called Heidi. The guy pushes the button at 7 o'clock, and away they went. And here's the game going right down the crapper. And I breathed a big sigh of relief. I'm sure I was the only person in the country who did. While NBC viewers, except those on the West Coast, were subjected to Heidi frolicking among mountain goats. 
The Raiders make goats of NBC. Harmonica to Charlie Smith, and he scores! What a game! On the subsequent kickoff, Jets' teammates collided. The Raiders recovered the fumble for their second touchdown in nine seconds and went on to win by 11 points. And the Oakland Coliseum became an enormous secret love-in called the Heidi Bowl. We knew that we won the game. The people in the stadium knew we won the game. But the people that were watching on television across the country thought that the Jets won and we lost. So we ran a, a flash test in a little crawl uh, informing everybody of the final score. It was where the uh, little girl cousin who has been crippled is trying desperately to walk for the first time. I jumped up and screamed. Oh, God. The screams in New York lingered long after the game ended. I landed at the airport. My father said, what's wrong? He said, you should be happy because you guys beat the Raiders. I said, Dad, what are you talking about? He said, when they interrupted the game, you guys were up by seven, eight points or whatever it was. I said, yeah, but we lost the game by 11. Oh, that girl is interrupting my life again. I do recall about a week after the show went on the air that NBC took out a full-page ad with great quotes from the critics about Heidi. The very last quote was, well, I didn't get to see the show, but I hear it was real good. Signed, Joe Namath. The 68 Jets Raiders game was voted the greatest regular season contest of all time. Not because of Don Maynard's 228 receiving yards, still a Jets record, or even the Raiders' nine-second scoring explosion. But for a little girl who stole the show. That was the greatest promotion that the AFL ever had was the Heidi game. I don't know, 10 years earlier, if you did the same thing on a, on a telecast, would you get that kind of an uproar? I don't know, but you sure did at that point in time, and it sure lets you know that you better not take my football away from me at 7 o'clock. This is NFL Action, and I'm Pat Summerall. Until 1968, winning the AFL championship was like climbing a hill, only to stand in the shadow of a mountain. But this year, climbing the hill was harder than climbing the mountain. For the AFL championship, in retrospect, became the most important game of the year, as it would, in the end, produce pro football's world champion. Absolutely. It's quick. Four years. It took a long time coming. Four years. You want to win every year. First year on. Winning. Nothing else matters to me. Winning. Whether I catch one or ten. Nothing else matters. At the time, I thought it was just a fumble, so I reached down, picked it up, and took off. We were just happy to get the ball. Has there been a key this year? There are about 50 strong hearts out here. That's where the key was. Jet Woolley had said, cold up there today. Jet Woolley. For the thousands who came, for the millions who viewed, the AFO championship seemed to offer a predictable struggle. The league's two best quarterbacks would match passes, while their respective coaches would match strategies. The game would be predictable in some ways, bizarre in others. But as the tension grew for the opening kickoff, one thing was clear. If the AFO championship was to be a mere prelude to Miami's Super Bowl, it would indeed be a stunning prelude. prolific offense in pro football. He would have liked to have scored early, 
but the Oakland Raiders found it impossible to do anything in their first offensive series as New York's defense dealt them a telling psychological blow in round one. Like a school of sharks, the Jets offense struck swiftly, as swiftly as Oakland had been stopped. Joe Namath to Don Maynard for a first down. Matt Snell over left tackle for six. Namath to Maynard again, 14 yards and a touchdown. On the play, Maynard had been aided by his own muddy field. Defender George Atkinson slipped as Maynard made his cut and the Jets flanker made the catch unmolested. It was quick and it was easy but it would be their only touchdown for nearly three quarters of the game. Oakland's second series was as fruitless and as frustrating as its first. Drop passes would not be uncommon. Freezing temperatures and 50 mile per hour gusts made it difficult for either team's receivers to hold the ball. Yet fate somehow dealt the Raiders more than their fair share. A pass that tipped off the hands of Fred Bolitnikoff was one in a series of near misses that would haunt Oakland long after the final gun. This attempted field goal that followed was yet another. The rest of the first quarter was a struggle for both teams, characterized by grudging defensive play and the inaccurate passing of both quarterbacks. The teams exchanged the ball eight times and could collectively muster only two first downs. Through all the wind-blown passes and flying bodies, it was evident that the Raiders were flat. They were playing as dead as this punt that rolled to a halt deep in New York territory. From here, late in the quarter, Joe Namath went to his ground game in hopes of adding another touchdown to his 7-0 lead. But after Boozer and Snell took him to the Raiders 25, Namath's arm betrayed him. The Jets would have to settle for a field goal from Jim Turner and a 10-0 first quarter lead. I slipped. Well, that's all right. You made it today. Well, kick. Through the first quarter, viewers had not yet seen what they had expected. A battle of the league's best receivers. Their complex formations and patterns. There was Don Maynard, number 13, who had scored the game's only touchdown and had been wide open on other occasions in the first period. But in the second quarter, Atkinson would play him tight and tough and would hold Maynard to one insignificant catch. Then there was the Raiders' great receiver, number 25, Fred Boletnikoff. Boletnikoff had been shut out and intimidated by New York's fiery cornerback, Johnny Sample, in the first period. While Sample may have won the fight, Boletnikoff won the war. Number 25 would lead the Raiders to their first score early in the second period. Quarterback Darrell LaMonica relied heavily on Bolitnikoff during the touchdown drive. He and number 35, set back Hewitt Dixon, were to be LaMonica's only effective weapons, however, throughout the game. After Dixon's 20-yard run with a flare pass, Bolitnikoff again broke loose in the secondary for the Raiders' initial score. A repeat of the play shows Bolitnikoff's pattern contained neither great moves nor great speed. 
All he did was avoid an attempted tackle and an attempted trip by two jet defenders, neither of which seemed to phase him. Down by three, the Raiders had finally seen their first ray of sun. The touchdown must have given Oakland's defense an emotional lift for the ensuing jet drive. They blocked Namus' passes. They broke down his iron pocket and forced him to scramble on two fragile knees. And they took him to the soggy ground for the first and only time in the game. Not only did they stop Broadway Joe, they stopped his entire game plan by containing the running of Emerson Boozer and Matt Snell and preventing the long bomb to his deep receivers. A completion to number 83, George Sauer, did keep the drive going. But on a third down play, a pass to tight end Pete Lamons fell far short of a first, and Jim Turner had to salvage the drive with a field goal. The Raiders were now confident that even when Namath was on target, they could prevent him from scoring a touchdown. Broadway Joe would ultimately shatter this confidence. On the following kickoff, the Raiders received their only real break of the game. George Atkinson seemingly fumbled, but the whistle blew the ball dead and Oakland retained possession. Monica quickly moved his team into New York territory, again having success with a flare pass to Dexter. But here marked the beginning of what was to be the key to defeat for the Raiders their inability to cross the goal line once inside the Jets' 20. This was the first of five such opportunities in the game. All but one would fail. George Blanda's field goal made it 13-10 with only minutes left in the half. There would be no more scoring for either team. Oakland got the ball back, but the whistle ended the half with LaMonica awaiting the snap and the Jets awaiting the third quarter, ahead by three points. The first half had seen both teams erratic, in which neither offense was able to control the ball for long periods of time. But the tenor of the game would change radically in the third quarter. The Jets would have the ball twice, the Raiders only once. Oakland's defense was charged up for the third quarter, and they stopped the Jets' goal after the kickoff. But their efforts were negated when Roger Bird fumbled the punt return right into Bake Turner's hands. Unruffled by a seemingly fatal turn of events, the Raiders' defense closed the door on Namus' offense. From his own six-yard line, LaMonica would again take the Raiders to the brink of New York's goal line, and he would do it exclusively through the air. Oakland's ground game by now had become ineffectual, but Belitnikov was unstoppable. The last play was not only dependent on Belitnikov's catch and breakaway move for its success. His co-receiver, number 81, Warren Wells, laid a crushing crossbody block on safety Jim Hudson that afforded Bolitnikov extra yardage. Used mainly as a decoy until now, Wells then turned receiver on the next play 
and the Raiders would have a first and goal on the six. But the Jets' defense refused to budge. Jim Hudson made three straight tackles, and the Raiders could move only to the two. Now midway through the period, Coach Rauch refused to gamble on fourth and two. Blanda's field goal tied the score at 13. The rest of the third quarter belonged to Joe Namath. On a brilliantly executed, time-consuming drive that would take seven minutes, Namath engineered his team 80 yards to a touchdown. How did he do it? Namath did it by making four crucial third-down plays to keep the drive going. He first hit Emerson Boozer, sprung free by Sowers' screen block for 12 yards and a first down. He then utilized the running of Matt Snell, who gained 25 yards on this drive and made the second crucial third down play. He took advantage of a play that almost ended the drive, a near interception. He hit John Maynard on a third and nine play with a perfect pass good for another first down. And finally, he made the big play, the touchdown. Again on a third down call. A flat pass to tight end Pete Lamons, who rolled into the end zone and gave the Jets a 20 to 13 lead at the end of the third quarter. For the first time since early in the game, Joe Namath had shown how devastating he and the Jets' offense could really be. Fifteen minutes to play and a touchdown behind, the Raiders again eased their way into the shadow of the Jets' end zone. Valetnikov beat Johnny Sample for 57 yards soon after the quarter began. On the last play, Sample went for an early fake that allowed the Raiders' receiver a step. But Sample made a good recovery after the catch to prevent a touchdown. Then it would happen again. For the third time in the game, the Jets defense met LaMonica's challenge and denied the Raiders their goal line. The tragedy for Oakland on this third down play was that Wells had sneaked free behind the secondary, but the pass instead went to Dixon and was easily batted away and almost intercepted by Jim Hudson. The Jets gave up three points but had prevented seven, which must have disheartened the Raiders. Namath then made his only mistake of the game as he was intercepted by George Atkinson. Only a rare tackle by Namath himself saved a score. <laughs> Namath's mistake on the pass was obvious. He hung the ball up a hair too long and Atkinson had a good angle to easily steal the pass away from Maynard. <laughs> This time, the Raiders made good their challenge. Pete Banizak sliced through the line and into the end zone. 
The decision not to use Banizak more often in the game hurt the Raider attack. He demonstrated a singular ability to break tackles and here gave Oakland their first and last lead of the game, 23 to 20. Joe Namath awaited the ensuing kickoff with anticipation. He had eight minutes to regain the lead. It would take him exactly 68 seconds. Earl Christie's return set Namath up at the 32-yard line. First and 10, George Sauer on a quick sideline pattern for a first down. On the play, defender Willie Brown was protecting against the long pass, and Sauer easily made the catch. Then it was Don Maynard's turn. Maynard made a great over-the-shoulder catch 52 yards away, and the Jets were suddenly at the Raider 12. Maynard appeared to have bobbled the catch, but a replay will show that he did have possession for the required length of time on a magnificent effort that set up the winning touchdown. Namath refused to probe the defense. He went directly for a score. Seeing George Sauer covered, Namath slipped, regained his balance, and fired a rifle pass to Don Maynard through three defenders for the crucial touchdown of the game. Namath and Maynard have proved themselves as poised a combination under pressure as the AFL had ever seen. Thus far, a tense and exciting game, the drama had only just begun. Following New York's go-ahead touchdown, the Raiders again quickly approached the Jets' goal line. But again, they could not unlock the door. Fourth down and with six minutes to play, Rouch this time chose to disdain the field goal. The strategy backfired. The man who made the last play was Verlin Biggs, number 86, who came crashing in from the right to end another Raider threat. Time and opportunity were now slipping away from the silver and black. With three minutes left, another opportunity and another failure would come to haunt the Raiders. Passes to Bolitnikov and Wells, plus a piling on penalty, gave them a first down on the 12. Monica called for a flare pass to set back Charlie Smith. A good call in this situation, but the play was executed poorly. Considered a free ball, but not advanceable, the Jets took possession at the point of recovery, and with it took the last real hope of victory from Oakland. bears at their own funeral, the Raiders and their coach silently watched New York run out the clock. Fate dealt its last blow to Oakland when on third down, Boozer's fumble gracefully bounced back into his own hand. Yet a courageous defense had contained the Jets, and Oakland would have one final chance. With 
with all their timeouts gone, only a miracle could save the Raiders. The kind that had occurred six weeks earlier in the Heidi Bowl. Today, that miracle would not come. to the bitter end, the final play must have seemed like an eternity. At 3.30 Eastern Standard Time, a champion was crowned. The Jets had closed the door on Oakland's offense when it had counted most and well deserved their first league title. For the Raiders, it was a heartbreaking loss that would be remembered for a long time. But as the sun began to fade behind Shea Stadium's west wall, others would remember a game that produced pro football's world champion. Once again, the Flushing Meadows faithful look to Joe Willie White Shoes to lead their Jets to victory over the powerful Oakland Raiders. Joe Namath, the AFL's leading passer, pitted his gimpy knees and whiplash arm against the Raiders' Daryl LaMonica, who is just as formidable and has thrown twice as many touchdown passes this season. Both teams have powerful front lines that are equally effective at limiting the run or smashing down the quarterback before he can cut loose the football. In the first quarter, Charlie Smith followed number 70, Jim Harvey, to a 26-yard game. Then LaMonica connected with Warren Wells, who accelerated past Cornell Gordon at the goal line, and Oakland drew first blood. Namath tied the game on a pass to Bake Turner, who spun free of Nemai Wilson's futile tackle and dashed to the Jets' first score. Warren Wells averages an incredible 25 yards every time he catches a pass. And even double coverage by the Jets did not affect his free-form ability to shake loose for huge gains. A bit of artful deception by LaMonica gave the Raiders a 14-7 bulge in the second quarter. Then the gifted Oakland quarterback connected with Wells for his 30th touchdown pass of the season as the Raiders' lead grew to 21-7. A Namath pass to Bake Turner led to the Jets' last score of the game as a talented Raider defense shut them out for the final two periods. 
Oakland traveled up and down Shea Stadium in the second half, but could not manage a touchdown. Twice, George Blanda bailed them out with field goals that ensured a 27-14 victory over the stumbling and unimpressive world champion Jets. If a Hollywood director conceived and put on film what coach John Madden and the Oakland Raiders are accomplishing for real, the movie-going public would freak. But against the Jets at Shea Stadium, it truly looked as if the Raiders had run out of miracles. The Jets, with number 32 Emerson Boozer alive and kicking, ran successfully as Boozer gulped 115 yards. But the elements and good defense combined, and the Jets led by only 3-0 at halftime. In the third quarter, New York's defense provided the spark. W.K. Hicks, number 33, intercepted a pass and slid 19 yards to the Raiders' 16. From there, Woodall threw a perfect pass to Pete Lammons, number 87, and the Jets led 10 to nothing. The Raiders finally scored late in the third quarter when George Blanda hit Warren Wells. But the Jets seemed destined to win. Al Atkinson made the Jets' second interception. Jim Turner kicked a field goal. And the Jets had a seemingly comfortable lead, 13 to 7. But with eight seconds left, it happened again. Monica's desperation he found Warren Wells in the end zone, and the Jets had been just another victim in a long line of Oakland miracle finishes. The Raiders 14, the Jets 13. From the Goodyear Blimp, Columbia, on a beautiful, cool night, this is the scene at the Oakland Coliseum in Oakland, California. Nearly 55,000 fans jamming the Coliseum. And tonight, it's the New York Jets versus the Oakland Raiders. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football is brought to you by Right Guard Natural Scent Antiperspirant, the great wetness fighter with the light, clean scent made from natural ingredients. Right Guard Natural Scent. And by Ford and your Ford dealers. See all the better ideas for 73 at your Ford dealers. Yes, the scene is set in the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum. And we're at that time of the year where the standings speak for themselves. Look at them. The New York Jets at 7-5. and five. If they could beat Oakland tonight and Cleveland, their opponent this coming Sunday... The Jets would be the AFC wildcard team in the forthcoming playoffs. But look at Cleveland. If Cleveland can beat their opponent, the Jets, on Sunday, and if Cleveland and Pittsburgh should lose to San Diego, Cleveland would win the Central Division and Pittsburgh would be the wildcard entrant. And Oakland doesn't want to play Miami in the playoffs in their first game, 
So they want the Jets eliminated. That's their motivation tonight. Hello again, everyone. I'm Howard Cosell. Welcome to our final Monday night of NFL football for the year 1972. The stakes are high, especially for the Jets, and we hope for an exciting encounter. But frankly, the Jets' hopes ride on Joe Willie Namath because of injured backs, and Namath has a strep throat. If he goes out, or at least a very bad and scratchy throat and chills, if he goes out, Bob Davis, number 15 from the University of Virginia, will be his replacement. Right now, to fill you in in detail on the Jets, with his 176 rabbit skins, the incomparable Dan Daru. Thanks a lot, Howard. You're getting kind of jazzy, too. I like that black turtleneck. California must do it to him. Talking about the Jets, it's been a kind of confusing year for them. The pass seems to be the thing that's caused the most trouble. They lead the league in passing. They also lead the league in passing against them. That means they're number one throwing and number 13 keeping other folks from throwing. They have had a lot of injuries, as Howard mentioned, on defense in particular. They haven't really been too good back there. They've had some. Steve Tennant's been hurt. Holloway's been hurt. John Elliott's been hurt. He's been back. You can go right on down the list. So it's been a thing of injuries. People have come from all over to see this ball game, though, because Joe Willie has a way of attracting a crowd like that. In fact, Jeff and Hazel, Meredith from Mount Vernon, Texas, are here. And I just thought y'all might like to know that. It was Jeff's first plane trip, and he's having a lot of fun. Going to see a good ball game. We'll get into more, de more details as the game comes along. Jet Forty, let me tell you, his mother's here also. But right now, Frank Gifford's going to tell us about those Oakland Raiders because they've already won them a place in that playoff berth. They look pretty good, too, don't they, Frank? Yes, they do, Don, and that, those rabbits almost made the season. <laughs> The Oakland Raiders can play this game relaxed, if you can call it that. They'd like to win it, as Howard mentioned. Uh, maybe Miami might be tougher than the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Pittsburgh Steelers have come on. They are dynamite. But if the Oakland Raiders can eliminate the New York Jets from the competition, they will not have to face the Miami Dolphins, the undefeated Dolphins. The Oakland Raiders have a very well-balanced football team. They're rated fourth in the AFC in defense. They're rated third in offense. And probably the reason they're doing so well on offense is Daryl LaMonica. In the past, Daryl Monica has had interceptions. A year ago, he finished the season with 16, and thus far this year, it's a new Daryl Monica. He's not going up on top with the bomb all the time, and he's thrown for only eight interceptions. They have two great receivers, and of course, Fred Belitnikoff leads the American Football Conference with 48 receptions, and then they have Raymond Chester, and he is something special. You're going to enjoy watching him tonight. Two great tight ends tonight. The Jets, of course, have their own Rich Caster. On defense, one of the finest secondaries you're going to find anywhere, and it is a very balanced football team, these Oakland Raiders. The thing to watch for tonight, I would think, would be those two tight ends from either team. And we'll be back at the Oakland Coliseum right after this message. Once and for all, which big screen color TV really has the best picture? The answer, Zenith Super Chroma Color. Opinion Research Corporation lined up the six leading color TVs with all identification hidden and asked more than 2,000 people from all over America to vote for the best picture. Zenith was the winner by more than two to one over the next best brand. Zenith Super Chroma Color. See the difference for yourself at your Zenith dealer. The solid 73 Ford Torino. Can it ride over this course of two by four smoothly enough to keep a tightrope walker balanced on top? High wire specialist Bill Couch is about to find out on a tightrope rigged to Torino's body. He's counting on Torino's suspension to soak up the bumps and keep him safely on that wire. Bill signals, and they're off. Those wheels are taking quite a pounding, but Bill isn't, as Torino's remarkable suspension does its job. The 1973 Ford Torino, the solid midsize that gives you confidence on the road. Incredibly smooth riding. Stable, strong, and quiet. Because it's a Ford. The new 1973 Ford Torino at your Ford dealers now. Ford Torino, the solid midsize. Back at the Oakland Coliseum in Oakland, California, we're expecting quite a football game because when the Jets and the Raiders have met, historically, it has been something else. People recall the 1967 meeting when Ben Davidson tried to realign the profile of Joe Namath. And then, of course, the 68 meeting. Well, as a little girl named Heidi interrupted that one, 65 seconds left to go. It looked like the Jets had it locked up. 
and the Oakland Raiders in 65 seconds came back and scored two touchdowns to win it. And there is Joe Willie coming out. He obviously will be starting. This is a, well, how more important could it be for the Jets? They have to win. They have to win tonight. They have to beat Cleveland to assure themselves of a wild card berth. And they can do it. And you saw the Jets will receive to your left. But again, there have been some historic clashes in this game. In this series, there is no love lost between the two. And whether or not anything was at stake, these two teams really get with it. Excitement here in Oakland. Of course, they clinched their division last week against San Diego. Next week, they'll wind up their season against the Chicago Bears. Waiting, of course, to have the determination of who they will meet in the playoffs. George Blanda, 23 years of competition. And this man is really a package. He still does the conversions and the field goal, kicking for the Oakland Raiders. And joining us tonight for our national anthem, well, he's an awfully good golfer, too. Singing and recording star, Glenn Campbell. Our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the fair telecast is presented by authority of the Oakland Raiders Football Club. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the expressed written consent of the Oakland Raiders Football Club and the National Football League is prohibited. And we're about to get underway. The Oakland Raiders will be kicking off as their special unit comes onto the field. Jerry DePoister is number four. He handles the kickoffs. Dropping deep, Chris Ferrisopoulos on the left. And on the right is Hank Bajorklin, number 40. Ferrisopoulos, number 19. And you'll hear a lot of excitement tonight. Fans are relaxed. The Raiders have clinched the AFC's Western Division. They would like to win this one tonight because they would like to play in sunny Miami. will go to the rookie from Princeton, the Dorkland. And up to the 25 comes the Dorkland. A 26-yard return. The starting lineup for the New York Jets. And we're taking just a moment to make sure it indeed will be Joe Namath. And yes, it will. Number 12. He's the quarterback. We told you he was suffering from a scratched throat as we look at an injured Oakland Raider. That's Jeff Queen from Oregon State. Jeff Queen. 
down on the 25 yard line. Waiting in the offensive huddle, there you see the veteran, number 13, Don Maynard, who could quite possibly set a new NFL record tonight. He needs seven receptions to break the record held by Raymond Barry. Number 13, the tight end is Big Rich Caster, of whom we smoke a few moments ago. Number 88, 6'5", 228 out of Jackson State. And Eddie Bell, little Eddie Bell, will start at the other wide receiving spot. In the, well, the injury rack, running back department the Jets have activated Emerson Boozer tonight number 32 he is opening along with Steve Harkey number 36 Harkey a second year man out of Georgia Tech John Riggins of course had surgery last week minor surgery to his knee but he's unable to go tonight it's a good offensive line it's a good offensive team they're fifth in rushing they're first in passing they're second in the AFC and now Jeff Queen comes off that offensive line for the Jets, John Schmidt is the veteran center. Dave Herman, 67, the right guard. Randy Rasmussen, 66, he's on the left guard position. Bob Sweas, 76, and Winston Hill, 75 with the tackles, and now we're ready to get underway. First and 10, Joe Willie Namath, the quarterback, moving from the 25. Namath to the right, down to the left. Going out, pass intended for Don Maynard and Namaya Wilson was there. Namaya Wilson at the left cornerback, 48. George Atkinson at the tight safety, 43. Jack Tatum is the free safety, number 31. Willie Brown, 24, the right cornerback. They make up a fine secondary. Dan Connors in the middle, 55. Phil Villapiano on the left side, 41. And Gerald Irons, 86, the right linebacker. Second down and 10 from the 25. Just underway from Oakland, California. Maynard right, Eddie Bell out left. Namath, little protection, goes out to Caster and he took his eyes off it. Oh boy. Well, the first one was almost picked off for a touchdown by Namaya Wilson, and this one saw Caster returning to a game he once enjoyed known as dropsies. Look at that split screen replay. All alone, yardage to be picked up right through the hands. Nobody near him, no crowd around, nobody could say was listening for the footsteps. Let's take a look at the roly-poly veteran coach, Wee Bubank, the only man to win it all in both leagues. And what he's watching is Joe Namath on a third and 10 call from the 25. Both wide receivers, Bell and Maynard, go out to the right. The tight end, Caster, with a lot of speed, is on the left side. Namath looking for Boozer. He has Boozer, and Boozer will be short of the first down, hit very hard by little Nehemiah Wilson. Boozer was just activated this week, Frank, and he has played some good football for those Jets. He came up about a foot short that time. They're going to, it appears early that they're going to give him the short stuff because Caster is about in that same area. And it also appears that Namath is going to throw and throw and throw and throw with Riggins and McLean injured and Booza perhaps rusty from two weeks of inactivity because of a hyperextension of his knee. All right, this is O'Neill. He'll do the punting and he'll be kicking deep to a single safety man with a short man in front. Branch is the up close man. Oh, and just getting it off. Short kick. Not a big bounce for the Jets on a very, well, we won't call it very soggy, but it is a slow field. All right, the Oakland Raiders, the champions of the Western Division of the AFC, will take over possession. And they move with their number one quarterback in the AFC, Daryl LaMonica, their setbacks, Marv Hubbard. He's approaching 1,000 yards. He has 941. Clarence, or rather Charlie Smith now, at number 23, is the other setback. Hubbard, 44. First and 10 from the 28. Hubbard. Over the 35 to the 37 goes Marv Hubbard. Here comes Hubbard again. Breaking a tackle, and he spins and twists to the 48-yard line. Marv Hubbard. And he's working Marv Hubbard. This time Hubbard is tripped up. 23, Hubbard 44. Hubbard gets the call and he gets the first down. Down and 10, the Jets have four linebackers. Eversole is in, the draw play. Marv Hubbard, good hole. Elliott recovers, makes a stop at the 40 and the ball is fumbled but recovered by Oakland. Coverage, as you see, the top of the screen. Going for Belitnikoff and Dangerous in that kind of coverage. Blitnikoff working against Tanner. Tannen and Tannen was there. 
from the 46, the 23-year veteran George Blanda. Holds all the scoring records, gets it off. Rocky Turner is watching it go through. The Raiders move out in front three to nothing. And this is the man, he's 45 years old. We'll be back at the Oakland Coliseum right after this message. And from the 22, Bell goes out to the left, picks up Brown. And Bell gets the completion and he moves out to the 41-yard line, covered there by Willie Brown, but little Eddie Bell is a man you have to really respect for his speed. Ball just short of his own 42, but it's Bell left. Maynard, the all-time leading yardage receiver, out to the right. Looking for Maynard. And he has it. Absolutely perfectly oh, thrown again. That is throwing the football. Pretty to see. Now, Gerald Irons, 86, jumps out of it. Amos right on target again, oh. and beautiful in that zone defense, and Maynard is doing a fine job working it behind him, Iowa Wilson, and ahead of George Atkinson. All right, let's watch him work, and also watch just as Maynard turns, the ball is already thrown. Amaya Wilson is going back, protecting against the deep. You see deep zone, you see Viviano coming out, number 41. When he turns, that ball is there. I don't care what kind of defense they're in, they're not going to stop that one. one of the best games have been performed, the players haven't felt well. And here comes Harkey as the flag goes down. Frank, that's a good point. Uh, a lot of times when guys don't feel at their top of their game, they, they really do feel a... In Oakland offside twice so far tonight, based upon that hitch as the linemen straighten up the offense. This is Harkey, and Harkey is inside the five to the three. Jerome Barkham is in for Maynard. Uh, oh, Joe. Oh. And Joe lost his footing on that turf. He doesn't have the best of knees, as I think every sports fan in America is aware of. Coverage with Willie Brown. Top of your screen, you did not see it. Maynard, bottom of your screen, he's being covered in by Nehemiah Wilson. Oh! Picked off by Willie Brown, and Joe Namath did not resist that single coverage he saw. He probably... He's upset at, uh, yeah. Brett Bell is who he's upset with. Frank, that was a really and truly a... Uh, seemed like this is a Joe Namath night for me, but that ball was well, well thrown again. Told you, it's heavy. kick. Turner has it, and he gets back to about the 39-yard line. Jerome Barkham out. Third down and 21, the ball at midfield. Both backs again, coming out of the backfield. Caster, and Rich Caster has it. He may go all the way. And a good block from Maynard. What a block by like John Maynard. You're right, Frank. He really poured it on. 50 yards, Rich Caster, his tip touchdown of the year. This is the toughest situation in the world, hit a long pass. Third down and long yardage, watch it come back. Good shot here on the ground, watch his good protection again, and look at the ball. Right over their heads, and here's Maynard, number 13, watch him, he sees it. Caster has it, out of his screen, he throws a good block. Look at Caster go, 50 yards and a touchdown. I think that was a setty rather than Lewis, though. I'm going with the setty. I'll tell you, these two teams play some games, as Frank mentioned earlier, through all the years. First and ten, the Raiders from their own 37. LaMonica now drawing a crowd, but he's trying deep to Belitnikoff. It'll be picked off. That's Steve Tannen. And he's picking up blockers. He really is that. It's Mike Ciani after him over there, and Mike got him. Steve Tannen all the way back to the Raiders' 40-yard line, finally dropped by Ciani. He returned that 31 yards. yards. Who's the other back, 36? Big draw, looking for Eddie Bell. And it's picked off, it is. No, no, out of bounds. And he had to come down inbounds with both feet. Did Willie Brown. Let's take a look. He is a beautiful athlete to watch, Willie Brown. Watch him there with Eddie Bell. He's playing his man. He sees the cut, sees Bell. Goes up, now let's watch him. He catches the ball, he's way up in the air. Now watch him come down, both feet have to be in. It looks that left foot is going out, and it did. Good call by that referee. From the 39, Howfield. He's got plenty of leg, he kicked six of them last week, but he misses, and meanwhile, Bob Davis thought he made it. Bob Davis the holder, but no. Kester again, split to the right. He has the speed of a wide receiver. 
and he collects it like a wide receiver and Steve Tannen makes the stop but it's first down Oakland. Ebersole has come in. The moving pocket. Monica going for Charlie Smith and he holds on and I believe he has the first down. Yes he does. Just over the 50 yard line into jet territory goes Charlie Smith and Chris Ferrisopoulos. And here comes Hubbard. Charlie Smith with the block out in front and Hubbard hurdles all the way down to the 43 yard line. Second down and four. Got a thousand and five now. Or a three. I started to say a while ago, this young man was cut. He went back and worked it out in the minor leagues, came back, and has really become the workhorse of this backfield. It'll be on to Miami and the undefeated Dolphins. On first and ten, LaMonica. And he's going up in the air to Belitnikoff, and he's open. He got it. That one was thrown right on the money. I'll guarantee it could not have been better thrown. Come back, he's trying to help him. On split screen, let's watch it again. The Mad Bombers, he called, really unleashed that one. And look at the leather car, right out in front of Tennant. Now look at him, never, never broke stride. It appears that Tennant is sliding and he may have, no, I don't, he may have hurt one of his shoulder that we mentioned earlier. Open Coliseum, right after this message. Again, putting both those backs out of the backfield, up to Harkey. And Harkey upset by Phil Villapiano. Again, the back's checking for Red Dog oh, and then pretty. moving out and it goes to Caster. That's pretty. Maynard, top of your screen, just moved back. You didn't want to encroach the line of scrimmage. Both backs again out of the backfield. Maynard's open. And Tatum saved the touchdown. Jack Tatum. Maynard all the way down to the 26-yard line of the Raiders. For Harkey, second down and seven. Ball inside the 25. Name at this time holding both backs in. That usually means he's going to try and go deep, but he checks off to Maynard. And Maynard picked up by Phil Villapiano, and this is a rough cookie. At the 20, mark it at the 18, and name it. They'll put it in the air again. And intended for Maynard again. And covering and covering well, number 48, Namaya Wilson. Defeated Dolphins. And the Jets, well, they have to win it or they can forget it. And the 25. Good. It's all tied up. Bobby Halfield from 25 yards out. This first down for the Oakland Raiders from the 24. La Monica finds Charlie Smith. Charlie Smith very close to a first down out to the 34 yard line. Second down, you saw how much. 155 remaining in the half. Charlie Smith on the screen. Cuts it back, he gets the first down and he gets out over the 40 to the 41. Top of your screen, Siani trying to get the call from La Monica. Litnikoff faking the deep pattern. He slips the ball, but he recovers on a great move. And, well, you hate to overdo it, but Fred Litnikoff is something else. The lead to the Jets because it's all over if they don't win it. All right, first down and 10. Just inside the 40. LaMonica is going to go deep to Chester, and he attracts a lot of... Who is that, Tannen? Yeah, Tannen almost made an unbelievable interception, Frank. He didn't. It appears that he's hurt again. Right in the same place, Don. Yep, that's not a good corner for old Steve tonight, but he was out to the right in front of Rip Sowles. Sandy on the inside. And right away, and Sowles gets the interception. He checked him out. And he and checked him got out. pretty good hands. And he came through. <laughs> but that's what he was trying to do. You're absolutely right. Number 88 is on the right side. His name it again. Puts both those backs out. Oh, me. Eddie Bell wide open right in the slot between those three men and you saw a great picture of the zone defense. The Jets just playing deep but they keep their 4-3 alignment. Now, now they're in a three man front four. Intended for Harkey and almost picked off by Dan Connors. That branch is deep. This will be well the attempt at the fair catch by anyway. Davis and wait a minute. The Jets recover, they're inside the 25. And it would give the Jets a three-point lead. It's tied up right now with 13 seconds remaining in the half at 10 apiece. It's good. And unless they run the kickoff back, the Jets are going to go to the locker room. 13 to 10 over the Raiders. And that is the end of the first half. The New York Jets out in front of the Oakland Raiders, 13 to 10. And we'll be back with highlights from yesterday after this.
Hubbard picks up three. It'll be second down and seven. The ball at the 28-yard line. Tough man out of Florida. He's back at the left corner. This on second down. Here comes Charlie Smith. And Charlie Smith rolls out for yardage enough for the first down. Over the 30 to the 31. And here's our Steve Tannen, our third-year man out of Florida. Leads the Jets in interceptions. He went down twice in the first half. Raiders just underway in the second half. And here comes Hubbard again. And Hubbard pounds out to the 40. Chester on the left side, number 87. Big tight end. This will go to Belitnikoff right in the seam of that zone defense. And Belitnikoff picks up the first down, moves into Jet territory at the 44. Second down now at seven. Both backs coming out of the backfield, looking for Belitnikoff. He has it again, and they're eating that zone alive on the left side. The 25-yard line. Charlie Smith finds a big hole. Inside the 20 goes Charlie Smith. Number 45, Early Thomas, saved a touchdown. That's the team they would like to avoid, I'm sure. They're undefeated. And if they win tonight, they will not have to face Miami. This is Hubbard, and he breaks loose. He's inside the 10 to the 7. Mark it at the 8, Marv Hubbard. Hubbard behind Otto and Beeler. All the way down inside the 5. He'll be at the three. Marv Hubbard. Elliott. On first down and goal. Hubbard gets the call again. He'll be very close to the touchdown. Jets in their goal line defense. Number 71 is John Mooring. The one. Smith gets the call. Touchdown, Oakland. Oakland regaining the lead. 14 plays. Raiders moving out in front of the New York Jets, 17 to 13, on the toe of the senior citizen of pro football, George Blanda. We'll try and take over, and he'll have to move it 88 yards. The Jets now trailing the Raiders, 17 to 13. Namath, who's been using his backs out of the backfield all night, over the middle it goes to his big tight end, Rich, Crest, Rich Caster. Both back circling out. Little Eddie Bell comes up with it. And he's out over the 30 to the 31. It is out to the right. Looking for Maynard complete. And Gerald Irons saved what could have been a much longer game. Looking for Maynard complete. That's it. That's Inside size the it. 25 to the 22. What a night that veteran is having. 75 yards and that one touchdown the end around to the tight end Rich Caster There's a flag, flag is down right in the middle and don't speculate but that generally holding. involves holding. It's the break that Oakland needed. Referee Jim Tunney at the bottom of your screen. We're going for Maynard and he had his man beat. He had Nemaya Wilson beat. He's kicked two tonight. 125 and 130. Kicked six last week. And he's kicked another one tonight. Three tonight. So the lead is short to the Raiders. 17. The New York Jets in a must game for them. The 17-16. We will be back after this. The Raiders at this point. Third down. Less than a yard. 9.35 remaining. Good LaMonica switches life. up. Chester's wide open. He can run. That's it. Great call. Roman defense. 69 yards. Raymond Tester as Daryl LaMonica came up with the play fake. The Jets cocked and ready for the attempt at the first down, but totally off guard. Completely amateurish. Through all the years they've watched Bart Starr do this, take another look at it. Yep, he was wide open. They were expecting that run. The Raiders have been running very well. No one was in about 10 yards of Raymond Chester. He hadn't even opened it up yet. And we'll be back at the Oakland Coliseum in Oakland, California, right after this message. Trust they know what Namath has to do, and he's going to do it right now. Up in the air it goes to Maynard. And that broke it. That's Maynard the over the 45, record. and that breaks that record. Wouldn't That's you think they'd stop the, the play and give him the ball or something? This man has spent 14 years of his life and has established a record. Look at that split screen now. Right in there. 
Now thrown seven to Don Maynard. We told you he broke the record of Ray Berry. Now on first and ten, going to the air, and Eddie Bell complete. Eddie Bell all the way down to the 30, and, well, I hope it doesn't sound like we're all Joe Namath no, it fans, doesn't. but he is incredible. That's the point I wanted to make, Frank. It's that man. Second down and 10 from the 30. And he gets it out this time to number 32, Emerson Boozer. Left, Caster's a tight end on the left side, 88. Eddie Bell, and it'll be picked off by Tatum, Jack Tatum. Jack Tatum took it all the way down to the 43-yard line. Fumbled the ball. I believe the referee has indicated. Recovered by the Jets. One referee said the Jets had it. One had the uh, Raiders had it. The head referee says the Raiders still have it. I guess that's the way it goes. Now they're arguing about it. Well, we're in Oakland. <laughs> Raiders now leading 24 to 16. Grantham makes a stop. And here we go. Well, I'll tell uh -oh. you. Don't do that, Phil Wise. Yeah, they're falling apart now. An absence of discipline. There's no point to that. No excuse for it. Number 16. Here comes Davis. And Davis is upended at the 15-yard line. Hubbard down to the 10. Frank, as we approach the end of our Monday night NFL season, now at seven, they're on the 10 yard line. This is Clarence Davis. Spinning and turning, he's down to five yard line. Phil Wise making the move. 316 remaining in the game. He chews a lot of gum, too. He missed it. <laughs> well, maybe wish he had the five back. Second down and 10 from the 20. Again, time to throw. A flag goes down as a Raider really unloaded on a jet. I think that was Villapiano. And they Maynard, Maynard was the one that was uh, the recipient of, I think, of Villapiano clothesline, if I'm not mistaken, Frank. We'll take a look at it. They did throw a flag. Let's see. Here's Maynard number 13. Let, who is that? Wham. And that is Villapiano. Just a quick shot to the jaw. Then I'm going to step on him. You know, I know what Namath has to be thinking. The, the big man, Arkham, is in in the four-end offense of the Jets at this point. Three-man rush for the Raiders. Flag is down. Namath going to Caster and is picked off. But hold on, the flag is down. I think the Raiders were offside, and I think the play will be called back. 2.55 remaining in the game. Flags go down, complete to Eddie Bell. But again, the flags in the middle of the line of scrimmage. I think this is against Winston Hill, number 75 for Holden. Green is in the slot. Lone back, Harkey. Hamath firing, and this time almost picked off. Gerald Irons, number 86, and almost picked it off, and Namath is shaken up. Namath is hurt. What's the ball? It appeared it was almost intercepted. Irons back around. It did go right through the hands of number 86 for the Oakland Raiders, and that would be Gerald Irons. Namath appears to be, he just no, he gestured, to, he gestured to, to the bench and said that I went out. Sent last year filling in for Namath. He has a job cut out, and this time he goes down. He was trying to go deep, did not have time. Racing in there was Otis Sistrunk, number 60. And he is going to get the wide out. Oakland pass rush, they know he has to go to the air. And in and out of the hands. Incomplete. Little Bobby Bell, or rather Eddie Bell, could not hold on. And Davis upset. Clock showing 2.34. Look who's coming back. And Joe Namath is coming back in. Be the ball game. That's in there. Well, how about it? Well, complete down to the 36-yard line is complete to... I believe Barkham. Barkham, Bell, Caster. 
Davis back trying he's going to go down down he goes at the 48 yard line a lot of pressure in there now it's third down and 31 and Eddie Bell leaves the game six receptions 89 yards Joe Namath went out of the game shaken up and now he comes with the screen and is almost picked off by Tony Klein Jets Good protection, Joe throws it as far as he can to Markham. And he caught the football, deflected, I believe. Yep, that has to be one of the unbelievable oh. catches. And look at Joe, hold on, he says, we still have a chance. Jerome Barkham, hey. let's look and again. Frankie throws it up, I believe that was Tatum that came over him at 31. He just bounced out of their hands and Markham caught it and kept going. Look at it from the other angle. We'll see if we can pick it up a little bit better for you. You take a look. Again, we told you in 1968. Look at that catch. The Jets were leading. To the left. Well, knew and that Markham there. got the ball. He will not get it over the line, but there is a flag down. There will probably be some kind of interference call, whether it's offensive or defensive. We'll wait and see. Stop the clock anyway, Frank. Against the Jets.